friends, welcome to episode 7 of the Tutorial Sect. I'm Icon and today we will dive deeper into the secrets of cultivation. I plan on evolving Hilly and Hua's skills a little bit more today and generally said we're going to talk about skills today because I feel like it's about time that we get towards this topic and we're going to transcribe a few more laws. I've taken the liberty to transcribe another law in between those episodes, so we're only transcribing the last fire type law, and then we're go finally going to start learning skills because luckily Helian doesn't need to transcribe her own law. It goes without saying. So, in between, we have made pretty good progress here. We have a steady surplus of food if the people don't destroy their stove, that is. <laughs> so, let's demolish the bonfire. One thing that I didn't mention all the way across was that the stove actually can be set up to produce certain recipes, but you don't need to. Basically, if you don't put up any work orders there, the cooks will go there and cook it. And I never had any issues with food supplies because I didn't uh, configure the stove, so it's really enough to put up a little kitchen and that's that. Alright, so we're making really, really good progress here. Our agency, that's something that I didn't talk about in the last episode, but I want to cover this uh, topic up now, is not only producing wheat, they're also producing influence. Influence is a currency which you, which you gain when your people are doing charity work, if I remember correctly. Or it was a general income of your agencies, I can't remember anymore. But I think it is a general income of your uh, of your agencies. So what that means, influence can be used for several things, but the most important thing to use it for is to found yet another agency. I mentioned that in the episode before that we can and will build more and more agencies out there. To do so, we will now start to allocate more trees or wood that is. So we're going to place down a big chop, chop order here. And overall, we need to take into account, though, that we will need yet another abbot for that agency. That's uh, what the bosses of these agencies are called in game. So right now, I don't have anybody who's uh, particularly proficient in social skills or battle skills, or preferably both. So I don't see who I should promote here. So probably we will wait for that agency a little bit longer. But the thing is, the better the quality of your abbot, the easier it is to develop your agencies. That's why I personally would always recommend you to wait if you can, but don't wait if you can't. The thing is, you cannot replace this person here ever again. The only thing you can do is you can't assign other disciples into that agency where they will give extra skills. So you see here the agent's stats are combined with 10% off. Of what? what? I, I always understood it like 10% of the agent's skills in battle, social, farming, and these stats are added into the total power of the agency. What that means, the abbot is 10 times stronger than or weighs 10 times stronger than any agent. Feel free to correct me if I have misunderstandings here. This game is very deep and very complex, and I gotta admit, sometimes I am not at uh, the full knowledge of things. I always try to achieve, but, you know, it's not that easy. So we're now accumulating more and more wood, which is good because we need more agencies. And most importantly, the Mount South Agency has a surplus of wheat. So since we haven't filled out all building spots yet, we can also select a last uh, extra building here. There's sadly... Uh, no, there is down here, you see how many buildings can be built. It's a little bit uh, hard to decipher. Buildings 2 of 3, there's uh, in that corner. I gotta legit admit that I haven't seen this... Uh, this before I just uh, recorded this video. 
<laughs> so, a logging camp is unnecessary with my location right now. I prefer the mine. Eventually, you will have logging camps and mines because your map does not replenish itself like that. You can plant new trees, but you won't be able to plant new mountains. Therefore, the use of mines is inevitable at some point. And beyond that, it's way easier to get your wood from these agencies than growing it yourself. Okay, but let's see. While we're at it, I'm going to let Halion transcribe the last of these laws. This is not helpful for her, but helpful for everybody else who's going to be a cultivator, because then everybody can learn also her skills. But here we have now more of these manuals. When you check out these manuals, there are different things which uh, can be done with them. Oh, come on, you guys. Oh, the doggy is even right next to that poor guy. For some odd reason, the dog can't explore on your home map, so he's just standing there in the dark and knowing where he has to go, just like a mysterious good puppy will do. So, the manuals here. Obviously, you can't do anything with them uh, to begin with, but you can store them in your uh, transcriptions, so you can choose and tr transcribe these. So, Hermetic Tribulations and the Golden Book of the Six Edicts and Five Directions. These are really important books. This one gives you knowledge about how to draw talismans, and this one gives you knowledge about a few medicine pills. And there's yet another attack. These fools don't know when to stop. So, for the dock, these guys are not really any uh, enemy. So, but sadly, as long as I haven't uh, explored these areas, my disciples won't be gathering these materials. So if you want to loot these uh, people to sell their stuff, which is in fact very lucrative and uh, worth it, you need to explore these areas where the enemies are lying, because the dog is just weird like that. There are a lot of weirdnesses in this game, which I just have learned to accept, and I just hope that with Amazing Cultivation Simulator 2, which is something which will happen eventually, a lot of these uh, things will be fixed, because that's mostly user interface problems. Okay, so Helion now has finally transcribed all the laws. She's now owning a whopping amount of 169k. So here comes a pretty interesting thing to... Uh, we can now study manuals. So you select study when you click the pavilion, and then you click the select the cultivator you want to. First thing you want to do is you only want to show manuals that can be learned. Now these are all skills that she can learn right now. It's it's very overwhelming at first, and I can't uh, I can't say anything beyond you have to accept that. You can hear filter these law by law, which is pretty useful if you want to get uh, to know your skill trees better, but we will use the all manuals area here. So in these text boxes, the lines which are blue are because I have the, um, the, the mod which is uh, in the description below, oh man. I just forgot how it's called. Um, give me a sec, guys. I'm going to look that up. Numeric descriptions is what I was looking for. Yeah. Numeric descriptions uh, lets these blue lines show up because without the numeric descriptions mod, you would only get to read greatly increases your max chi, greatly increases your artifact power. And because I was so turned off by that, I used this mod because now we get the exact numbers and percentile values. I can't recommend this mod enough. Use it. <laughs> so here, our first and foremost interest are all the skills which increase our max chi in any way. Because the higher your max chi, the higher the overall potency of your cultivator will be. I will get into more details about that later down the road. The second thing you want to do is to increase the, the stat of choice. 
So every cultivator has a certain specialty perk. For example, Halion's Law has a pretty good fighting power. So fighting power is mostly reflected by the stat artifact power bonus. So I'm trying to accumulate now as many skills which increase her max chi and her artifact power bonus. For spellcasters, there's spell power. And for everything else, well, we're going to cover up that up later. But I think you get the general idea at this point. So as you see here, the Luna form skill also is a connective skill because it has a fitting element. The Luna form skill has the earth element and you remember the uh, the diagram there. Earth go plays nicely with metal. So when we check it out here, Sunflower Refining Law, all these skills are connective and therefore cheaper. So I could imagine that fire, no, then it was that water. Wood. Now, which one is the one is the bad one, or is it not shown correctly here? Ah, here, wood is the counteractive one. I was just not uh, hovering over uh, elementally uh, defined skills. So you see, wood skills are counteractive for steel. I think I need to. I'm going to put this up here again. As you see here. Metal is just destroying the wood element, and therefore all the wood skills need cost me more XP on her, all the earth skills cost me less XP on her. Everything else she learns on a normal rate. So we're now going to study all these chi increasers. That's the first thing we can do. So Luna form is a skill which we need to um, mention because it makes it turns uh, um, it turns men into female. That's just what it does. And men into women. Whoa, sorry. It turns men into women. Can't talk anymore. So most of these skills here invo involve other uh, increases. One thing that I will definitely take here is Spirit Revel, which increases my adventure fly speed bonus. This makes you travel faster between between the uh, locations on the world map. Max Chi increased 50%. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, little favorite check mark on every skill which improves my maximum Chi. I have played the game long enough to know the backgrounds here. These bluish backgrounds you see here are mostly involving uh, our are these uh, utility skills where you find quite often stat increases and chi increases. These brown ones are almost all active rituals, so-called miracles, and whenever there's these swords in the background involved, it's mostly artifact skills, and these uh, swirling uh, colorful thingies are spellcasting nodes. So we're mostly looking for these, like uh, the Earth Mother skill here. Chi sense, by the way, is depicting how fast your character regenerates Chi, and this is very, very important too. Base mental state and cultivation speed bonus increasers are pretty good too, even though it's counteractive. So, this is also mandatory. This is also mandatory, at least for me. The base mental state modifier, that's that little globe which depicts how happy or unhappy your cultivator is. Chi absorption efficiency is the same thing. You just absorb chi from your environment faster. The thing here is chi sense and chi absorption are basically the same. They are just so slightly uh, pointed out differently. I'm pretty sure there's some innate mechanic which makes sense somehow. I don't know which one that should be. Here, stat increasers are also very, very desirable. I make them mandatory too. Here we have it. More max chi and max chi recovery rate. Here, lifespan modifier. I don't uh, do that as a default base mental state and chi absorption again. So take your time the first time to read all these skills. The descriptions are pretty uh, pretty good actually and give you a good impression about all the cool fantasy going on in this game. It's, uh, it's a shame to, to skip over them like I do here, but this is a tutorial for the sake of the mechanics. But I just want to uh, mention that this game has a very, very 
thoroughly designed background here and it's really really cool so i also made all these uh, mood increasers mandatory out of a simple reason when your cultivators have a higher base mood they can cultivate longer there's even a method later in the game which enables you to basically learn or, or cultivate forever because your your globe never falls below a certain threshold this is why we want all those base mood increasers because eventually when you have gained enough base mood increasers you can cultivate your character forever which is really good because then all this micromanagement which is involved here uh, is uh, gone. So now she's learning the skills. As you see here, she's using the manual pavilion for that. In this process, she's uh, burning up all her inspiration here. And we can see the max chi amount is slowly rising a little bit. Here, 4,000. We started at 2,750. And at the end of our journey, we were at almost 5k so he wants to practice internal core internal uh, core is his uh, maximum hp amount in case you're wondering as far as i know at least so as you see here she she stopped studying this happens because she ran out of inspiration for all the skills that I assigned her to learn. That's why I also bookmarked all these skills, so we're going to abort that. And we're now going to start and store these other books. So here you go, Helion, because you're not done yet. Chop chop. So since I want her to transcribe these immediately, I just interrupted her work. And transcribing smaller books is nowhere near as uh, um, rewardful in terms of inspiration than the uh, entire loss. I don't even know if these give you inspiration. So I want to check. So as you see here, it gives you a small amount of inspiration, but surely just a small amount. The real gain here is that these uh, are now in my manual pavilion. And you see now we have transcribed them and we can now do that with uh, pretty much all these unless they are already stored in here so common elixir recipes that's one we were still missing okay so now after that's been done there's one book which is behaving differently that's the uh, records of the immortals volume one so as you see here there's no storing a menu available or anything like that you have to equip these books to your cultivator and then i'll show you how to read them in a minute these are basically books which contain lore they don't contain skills or laws or anything they just contain knowledge about the world and to use these you get into the inspiration tree and you, you click it here you know that's that's absolutely intuitive and uh, i know it re it's really horrible but that's how it works these books can be accessed here you spend zero inspiration to use them and then the cultivator will learn them what this does at the end of the day is it unlocks new locations on the map which you can uh, access them I feel this is a little bit uh, sloppy uh, implemented here gameplay wise but that's just how it works we have to live and uh, live with it and accept it so because Halion was uh, low on XP we're going to send her over to Mount South and grab these uh, inspiration points now meanwhile our other friends here are getting closer to break through so Zuruji is at the point where she can be where she can break through so as we see here she's a okay fit to the uh, true sun refining law so we're going to do this but only after i have a couple of disciples more because right now the amount of disciples in my sect would be well okay two people nah never mind two people are enough but what we do first is we're going to check out so a fire cultivator would love a wood room oh lucky for him so we're going to build a new room as a matter of fact this is going to be a marble room and it's going to be a room for 
Hylian Hua, actually, and uh, Zunruji will inherit her old room. So, we're gathering the belief here, 28k, yum. It's not as much as we had before for the transcriptions. Your biggest chunk of XP comes with the first uh, influx of transcriptions, as a matter of fact. So, use these wisely. Okay, we're going to put up an iron bed here in this room. So a so you remember the structures emit energies and the Peng Shui buildings absorb these energies and uh, trans uh, transmute them into happy furniture. And therefore we have an earthen room and we put a metal bed in there and it's going to be a happy bed. Peng Shui is weird like that and it took me a terrible long time playing this game not mixing things up time and time again but i'm getting better at it and i can only say it is quite confusing yes but this game is not called amazing confusion simulator for no reason so we're going to check back here so we have now 40k inspiration we're going to study one thing here let's see so we were lacking the breakthrough incantation which was a uh, mood increaser, and the Cleansing Flame, which was an intelligence increaser, which is an insanely costly skill for her because it's counteractive. Okay, but I want to go for something else here. So we have unlocked the Golden Book of Six Edicts and Five Directions, which unlocks our basic set of, um, of talismans. Oh, and I overlooked the Compass Doctrine. You see, some artifact skills give you uh, max chi too. You have to sift through them and uh, manually select all the skills that you want to have. But the Compass Doctrine is not only a max chi increaser, it's also a uh, increaser for constitution. All skills which increase your character's stats are so valuable. Because you see Zuruji here. She is not exactly a perfect fit for the um, True Sun Refining Law, because her stats are not there. But if we pump in these skills to improve her stats, her law, f her, her law match will increase due to that. So the more of these skill increasing skill, uh, stat increasing skills you, you allocate in your uh, sect, the easier it will be to, to put your people to a good um, fit into their law. So you need to get less and less selective with these stats, which is a good thing. And uh, our biggest uh, gripe about Zurushi is that her chi sense is really horrible. She has only a very low um, amount of uh, baseline max chi. And she will be a only she will be a mediocre cultivator therefore forever. But Hellion is my is my poster child of a really awesome cultivator in any way. I put my, a lot of my resources into her uh, development here right now. It's really good to have a secondary cultivator in which you put only like 10 or 20 percent of the resources, which does the adventuring for you, which does the dirty work, while your your main cultivator can sit lazy in his cultivation chamber and grind XP. So you should differentiate between cultivators which do the, the work and cultivators which are just there to be the, the prestigious uh, powerhouses of your sect. There are, there are, there's not enough time and resource in this game to make every cultivator um, equally good. You will suffer from pretty, uh, pretty hard shortages if you try to to maximize the quality on every cultivator at once. I tried that, a lot of people tried that. You can try that for yourself and see where it leads you. It's a really interesting study and I can only uh, I can only recommend it. There's nothing better than doing mistakes. Um, but long story short, usually you have one cultivator, you have to put all your eggs into that basket and the other cultivators are just there for the chores. With that being said, we're going to promote Zuruji here and put her and make her a uh, fire cultivator. We're not going to do much more than that for now because she uh, it will take a while to develop her skills. 
but we're now going to go over to the talismans we just learned. So in your basic equipment, there's always a pile of talisman paper. This is the the item where you can draw talismans on. There's also a workbench, the talisman table, which we definitely should put up. There's a couple of buildings I should I should uh, cover up in the next episode too. So. At this table, we create stuff like talisman paper. So to draw a talisman, you select the cultivator, which has learned the recipes, and then you select the draw command and select a pile of talisman paper. Now the drawing mini game is upon you. So over here, we see these. Ignore the this uh, bar. This is only here because I'm using a mod. This is normally not here. So, you see, a talisman used to raise move speed, talisman used to raise resistance to cold, resistance to heat, and so on and so forth. So, the most interesting talismans are those which allow you to travel faster, but sadly I don't have any of these yet. So, oh, I do, but I didn't learn the book there. I just wondered, so... Give me a sec, I did a mistake. So where is that book? Hermetic Tribulations? No, 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 no. So there that's a uh, that's a constant problem with this game that you have to search for things like that. But luckily there's this uh, search bar down there. So we're going to Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> uh Okay, we, we're we just uh, looking like that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, where is it? So give me a second, I'm searching for this. So all the confusion has settled. I have already learned the correct book uh, just uh, on the wrong cultivator there. I'm sorry, guys. So, Heli and Hua has learned these, and the most interesting uh, talisman at this point was the talisman of spiritual traveling. This increases your move speed and your speed during adventures. Of course, there's a lot of uh, talismans, and there's basically a talisman for everything. And uh, really interesting is the one for chi absorption as well, because this increases your chi regeneration too. But we're going to go for the spiritual traveling one. So what we can, what we're doing here is we get to draw that thing. So you just uh, go there. I'm really bad at this. And uh, you see the paint is also flowing. And the better you perform at this mini game, the better the quality of the talisman and the better the potency of this thing. So if you see here, that's, uh, well, let's see what quality that is, that will be. So here we go. Let's see how horrible I performed. So here, this one is a 70% excellent quality. Okay, could have been worse. So, I personally don't like this kind of minigame, I gotta admit, that, uh, I, I just don't like it. So there's uh, the um, the Perfect Artist mod, or uh, Great Artist mod, that's what it's called, Great Painter, exactly. And with this mod being set up, you can just uh, define what kind of uh, quality the talisman should have and then you can just go for instant draw. I personally use these uh, mods without being as, a, a little bit ashamed because uh, for me sandbox games are all about having fun with the game and not uh, being mad about features that I don't like at all. So feel free to do it as you please and uh, I I keep using the great, the great Painter mod out of other reasons too but that will be discussed in a different uh, episode. So now we have Helian Hua as a very pretty uh, or as a pretty powerful uh, cultivator. She just uh, congratulated Zuruji for her success here. We're going to assign this uh, place to Zuruji here because she's uh, now owning a wooden room 
And now we have to build yet another cultivation chamber, of course, for um, Ruji as well. So we're going to send her over to Mount Baron, and she's going to pick up some cotton for us. But first I want to show you something. So Heli and Hua has a travel time of 0.4 days, whereas Zuruji has a travel time of one day. So this is not only because of the fact that she is wearing this uh, travel time talisman, it's also because she learned skill, which increased her travel time, but also each rank that you get higher, like Chi Shaper, Core Shaper, and so on, lowers your travel times as well. So the 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 higher the, the cultivation of your character, the faster he can travel per se on the map. Okay, so I did send Zuruji over there to gather the cotton for her room nevertheless, because we need some cotton for the cushion, but building that uh, cultivation room can be done during her absence and I don't need, she doesn't need to be fast. Okay, enough of that. This is enough for today's episode. We're going to build yet another cultivation room out of a different element in the next episode. And also I'm going to dive deeper into Heli and Hua's next uh, evolution step in terms of cultivation. So I thank you guys so much for watching this series. It's been a pleasure and I'm really, really happy to do this for you. And we're going to continue with that. Drop your comments down below. Any questions, ask away. I'm there for you. Thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed it. And last but not least, check out the channel there. I am doing daily content and you might want to consider subscribing and turning on those notifications. So have a nice day and see you soon. Bye bye.